The story you're about to hear is a compilation of documented true facts about historical characters, events, or locations. Please sit back and listen as I narrate this story to you. David Stone was a successful stock market analyst making good money in a stable career, a big fan of the New Age movement, a popular subculture in the 1980s, and by all accounts, a sane man with a sharp analytical mind. By all accounts, he was a likable, laid-back, and easygoing guy with everything going for him. But in 1988, he began to exhibit some out-of-character behavior. He began delving deeply into the New Age movement, which he had previously shown little interest in, but which he now fully embraces, making frequent trips to Sedona, Arizona, to participate in New Age retreats and what he referred to as vision quests. However, a few days before Halloween in 1988, he left his home after a heated argument with a party guest turned violent, which Stone's friends say was completely out of character. Stone hosted a party at his swanky apartment with a group of friends on the evening of October 27, 1988, which was described as a fairly calm gathering of about 20 people with no really heavy drinking or drugs involved. It had actually been a fairly quiet affair until Stone witnessed something that caused him to erupt into a rage. Stone became agitated when he saw a friend by the name of Anders Wavrel messing around with his golf clubs near the end of the evening. He allegedly jumped Anders and began mercilessly beating him, punching him repeatedly until others intervened and broke them up. Stone allegedly appeared disoriented and in shock of what he had done as partygoers observed his profusely bleeding, injured friend, not understanding what had just occurred. Friends and family would later say that David's violent outburst was completely out of character for him and had come completely out of nowhere to stun everyone in the room. Stone's head seemed to be clear the next day, and he told his roommate that he was going to get out of town for a few days to clear his head and go on one of his vision quests to seek spiritual guidance, after which he would go off to be the best man at a friend's wedding in El Paso. The next time anyone saw him was in Hidalgo, New Mexico, about 140 miles from La Jolla, when a local farmer saw him stumbling along a desert road early on October 31. According to the farmer, the weather was very cold at that time, but Stone was dressed in nothing but a t-shirt and shorts. Stone was walking with a walking stick, and when the farmer asked if he needed a ride, he apparently declined saying he was looking for the beast. After that, he went off the road to begin walking out into the remote wasteland of the desert, and it was previously reported that he had been seen by some other locals, wandering around and acting strangely and talking to himself. And then he was gone. When Stone's friend's wedding on November 3 came and went with no sign of him, Friends and family became very concerned. His father contacted all of the sheriff's offices between San Diego and El Paso. None of them received any reports about him. A massive search was launched to find him. Planes flew overhead and teams of searchers used bloodhounds to cover and recover the ground. His tracks were discovered, but they appeared to have simply stopped in the middle of nowhere. He was nowhere to be found. On November 5, Police discovered Stone's abandoned car along a forlorn stretch of New Mexico Highway 80, about 14 miles south of Road Forks, New Mexico, in a desolate moonscape of an inhabited wilderness, but there was no sign of Stone himself. The discovery of the car would signal the start of a strange series of enigmatic clues that surrounded it all. David appears to have left several mysterious clues after he vanished. They appear to be associated with the New Age movement. For one thing, the car was parked near some pyramid-shaped mountains and nearby was a rock pyramid surrounded by a triangle. Another rock pyramid would be discovered some distance away along with Stone's Rolex watch and two quarters. A business card in a pocketbook bible for a man named Tony Ballesteros, as well as a cryptic note, were discovered in the card that said, They think the word is in the safe. Six knives in Rob's room. Use by Sir T and use Take Your Chances Halloween. David went missing on Halloween, which just so happened to be the day of the holiday. Nobody knows what happened to him or why he acted so strangely before vanishing. No one had even the faintest idea. 
Searchers would spread out in search of the missing man, uncovering even more bizarre clues. They discovered a series of numbers scrawled in the sand that turned out to be a sequence used by engineers and stock market analysts known as the Fibonacci sequence, which usually begins with 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. However, instead of ending the sequence with 21, David had inadvertently written 18. He may have left a cryptic message because he wore the number 18 jersey when he was a college football player. However, because his car was discovered near the 18-mile marker on Highway 80, investigators believed it was a coded distress signal. To add to the strangeness, police bloodhounds followed Stone's scent to Highway 80 and then stopped at a remote location 13 miles from where his car was discovered, where the dogs became confused and were unable to track the scent any further. His parents discovered a strange business card in a pocketbook Bible while going through items in the car. Tony Ballesteros was the owner of the vehicle. He was questioned by cops, but he claims he never met David. He was camping with friends and his business card most likely fell out of his pocket and was claimed by David while he was on his excursion through the campground. There was no evidence of wrongdoing throughout. The manhunt for David lasted nearly two weeks before it was called off. There was no more trace of David and it was widely assumed that he had simply gone out into the desert on one of his vision quests and succumbed to the elements. But all of the strange clues left people perplexed. Any new lead would not arrive for several years. On February 23, 1992, two hikers discovered human remains in the remote desert near Granite Gap, New Mexico, which were later identified as stones. One of the hunters, Ken Milberg, said that at first he thought they were animal bones, but as he got closer, the first bone he picked up looked like a human jawbone. He realized the bones were most likely not animal bones at all. They appeared to be human. According to the hunter, the skull appeared to be shattered from the back. The skeletal remains were discovered about five miles from where his car had been found in an area that had been searched at the time of his disappearance and were so desiccated that it was impossible to determine how he died or why he was in this particular location. There was no visible trauma to his remains despite the fact that his skull was in pieces. The medical examiner believed this was due to animal predation. There were no personal items discovered with the bones, such as car keys, wallets, or clothing. They were all gone. The only thing discovered were the remains of his shoes. While some believe David was murdered by drug smugglers, as the New Mexico backcountry is a popular location for smuggling and civilians have been murdered to protect shipments, Police have attributed David's death to dehydration and prolonged exposure to the outdoors, also known as death by misadventure. Hey everyone, I just wanted to express how grateful I am that you took time out of your day to listen to my narration. This is Nikki of Twisted Mind and I'd like to wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Salamat!